Hi, my name is BC Hoffman. And I'm Adrian Bustamante. And today on Recipe Wars, we are doing pasta carbonara. So I'm super excited to do this. I'm actually doing Mario Batali's recipe, which is as Italian as you can get. Now, carb. That's what everybody carb. calls it. Carb. Everyone <laughs> says, let's start the carb. Two I'm ways. Sure. It's carbohydrates and carbonara. Exactly. But it's so good for late night, midday, any time of day. I Anytime. really like carbonara. And you have a recipe that has no cream in it. No cream whatsoever. This is the real traditional one. The first thing we'll do is butta la pasta. And then we're going to start. Basically what the dish resembles most is a really Italian style bacon and eggs that they just have to do with their pasta. So we're going to use this unbelievable guanciale. Okay, well tell everybody what guanciale is. Guanciale is the jowl of a pork or a pig that's cured very much like bacon like or like pancetta. The whole thing from the ear all the way down oh, okay. here. Basically taking the variation of bacon and eggs in the American sense and doing it as the Italian flair and just adding pasta to it. Now, this is not your typical American Italian style carbonara. There's no cream in here. There's no peas in here. This is just your pork, your eggs, your cheese, and your pasta. Boom, that's it. I'm doing Anne Burrell's recipe, which is very Ooh. similar to Mario Batali's. Why reason, would that be? Reason being is Anne Burrell is actually Mario Batali's sous chef. I'm getting ready to start my carbonara. I've got a lot of lovely pancetta diced here, and I'm going to add it to my saute pan that has just a little bit of olive oil in there. And notice the pan is cold. We're warming all this stuff up together so we melt the fat out of there. This is called rendering. We're gonna use all of this big fat pan full of fat and we do that low and slow. Carbonara is a very classic dish and black pepper is one of those flavors that's really involved in that. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna spice grind this because Otherwise, with a mill, that's a lot of cracking. This dish is a favorite of cooks and chefs everywhere. It's something that people like to make late at night, maybe after a service, because it's, it takes no time at all to make, and it's so good. Yeah, we used to, I mean, at the restaurants I worked at, especially steakhouses, we would make this already because we already had our pasta blanched off, and this would literally take less than 10 minutes because the only thing that really takes the time on this dish is cooking the pasta. And speaking of pasta, we are going to be using some spaghetti, but our water's already, bo already boiling. We have enough pasta here for the both of us, so we'll be sharing a pot. <gasps> the honors for you, sir. Oh, thank you. Now, we've already salted our water, and Ann Burrell makes a big statement in regards that she loves her water to be salted like the sea. All right, our pasta is boiling. So now it's time to render some fats. Where'd that lid go? Let's throw the lid back on there, cook it up. All righty, rendering the fat. So I think we've got about, what, two to three tablespoons each of uh, olive oil, and I'm gonna throw that bad boy in there as soon so. as this gets nice and hot. Now, Anne Burrell made a big statement that she liked to throw both of these in here at the same time, meaning both of them, meaning the olive oil and the pancetta, to actually have them start rendering together, which I didn't think makes a huge, huge difference, but we're gonna follow the recipe, and we're gonna see what happens. Let's do it. So I'm using a cold pan, as per Anne Burrell, and then placing my olive oil and my pancetta in, and then I'll start the heat underneath it once they're in there. So carbonara is actually uh, the coal miner spaghetti. And a lot of people are like, well, the true origin of where it came from, not quite sure. They know it came from Rome, ancient Rome, but outside of that, they aren't quite sure why it's called carbonara. Uh, there's speculation that it was made for the coal miners because it was a cheap dish that was nice and hearty to make for them. Mm -hmm. And the other speculation is because of the actual black pepper that's in there, it looks like flakes of carbon. coal, carbon. Oh, carbon. So, carbonara. Yeah, so the etymology is a little bit, uh, you know, unknown. But there was also what carbonari means Coleman yeah. in Italian. So there was also that, that possibility as well. There's all these different, different ways you can go about looking at it. So all right, this is gonna render down uh, as soon as he gets done heating up his pan. And by rendering, we're just letting the fat just drip off this pancetta become nice and crispy, and that's what we're gonna be waiting for here. You'll hear some sizzle, you'll see some popping, and you'll get that great smell here in your kitchen. Now, Mario Batali actually uses guanciale in his dish, which is actually the pork jaw. So the jaw is, 
it's, it's not just this part. It literally goes basically from the ear all the way down to the chin. Uh, it's marinated in a bunch of flavor and seasoning for about seven to eight days, becomes nice and soft, and then it has the same effect that pancetta or you at home can use bacon, whatever you'd like to use, as long as it's nice, fatty, and pork. Did he use a combination of pancetta? I'm, I'm, he actually just uses, uh, in the recipe, he just uses guanciale. So you're gonna wanna get this nice and hot, and you're basically just gonna caramelize this, get nice and brown, render all that fat. It's just gonna be sexy in this pan right here. While my fat is rendering, or my potato is cooking, I'm gonna start adding my eggs to my bowl here. I'll be doing some whisking here in a little bit. You do your whisk. I'm actually using four eggs, and yours actually calls for... Eight. Wow, so you're doubling the amount of eggs going into it. I'm doubling and, the amount of eggs, and I believe I'm doubling the amount of cheese as well. Yeah, and, and the other thing is, is you're using both pecorino and... Uh, Parmesan. Parmesan. Yeah, and I'm just using straight up Parmesan. And on top of that, I separated my yolks from my whites. And the reason for that, I'll show you at home. Yeah. Uh, Mario Badali is actually a big fan of doing portion recipe. Um, and basically that means is making a larger batch, but being able to control the amount that goes out. So basically being able to make one dish at a time for, you know, if you have like six people that are coming and two people come at a time, you can make it as it goes to order, which is a very traditional restaurant style yeah. of doing that. So he uses the egg whites to actually thicken with the pasta, and then he uses the yolk just to put on top of the nest of pasta once it's actually done. And you at home, and as the eater, get to control the actual creamy consistency and texture of your dish by doing that. Pasta's boiling, bacon's cooking, ah. man. I'm a happy man. So our pasta Dude. is, I believe, done. So you want to basically have it not only al dente, which is to the tooth, uh, but you want it a minute before it gets to al dente, which is right now. You want to use this water because it's starchy water, and the starchy water is actually going to add creaminess to your dish. Outside that, we're going to take this, we're going to throw it and strain it. You do not want to rinse it off. You do not want to get it cold. You just want this pasta straight. It's going to go right into your pan. So I've added my Parmesan and my Pecorino to the eggs, and then I'm also gonna be liberally seasoning it with black pepper. So I'm just gonna do it all together, get it in there, get that pepper in there, and then once this is done, I'm gonna add it to my mixture, excuse me, I'm gonna add it to my pancetta over here. Right. So I'm literally just gonna have this on for approximately another minute with the heat, just slightly. So we're gonna add in our pasta right now to our pan. And we want to make sure that we coat this nice. That's just going to be coating your pasta. That's going to be your sauce base. That's going to be your creaminess. That's going to be your texture. In the video that I watched, Ann Burrell actually used the reserved water as well. But in the recipe, I didn't notice it wasn't in there. So since these dishes are so similar, we decided to try and do some differences. So I'm not going to be using any reserved pasta water. I'll just be using this. But I don't think it's going to make too big of a difference as I'm using more eggs and more cheese. Yeah. So it's still going to have that creaminess that we're looking for from the sauce. So I'm just going to do this for about one minute or two minutes with the heat on. And then after I've incorporated it for a little bit longer, I'm going to then take it off the heat entirely, add in my egg whites and my cheese. Now I'm doing the same thing as this young man just did. I'm going to be placing some pasta in my pan and adding it back to the heat, mixing it up. And then I'm going to take my egg and cheese mixture with a long pepper and get it in here as well. But I'm going to make sure that when I'm doing it, and I'll talk to it again, that when I'm adding my eggs to this, I'm moving it around vigorously because I don't want scrambled eggs and pasta. I just want to be able to make this into a nice sauce. Add in my egg whites. Now, you definitely want to make sure that you don't have it on the heat. And the reason for that is, is you don't want to actually overcook the whites. You don't want them to coagulate. You just want them to go right on top and just get in a nice creaminess. So it's going to look slightly creamy, but not overly egg white. And it's not going to be an omelet in your pasta. All right, so this has been heated up for roughly about a minute or two. I'm going to do the same thing that BC did. I am taking this off of the heat. Push that aside and bring this over here. And while you're doing that, I'm going to add in a little over half of my cheese. Do it. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start adding this egg and cheese mixture. Like I said, moving it around vigorously. The pan should be hot and cool enough now to the point where we won't be seeing any scrambled eggs, but the cheese will just blend in with the egg mixture and the pancetta fat. 
and we'll get a beautiful, beautiful sauce. So I'm literally just gonna take my yolk, have a nice little nest of pasta, uh, and I'm just gonna is. sit my yolk right on top, right there. I'm gonna throw on my cheese. Plated for one to enjoy and for us to taste and see who is the winner of this recipe war pasta carbonara mm -hmm. style. Just for the sake of it, Just I'm going to throw on a little more black So I'm done too. plating my dish. I made sure that I got enough pancetta in there for everyone else. Just a little garnish here. Boom. Boom, sir. Boom. I'm Let's excited. See. I'm, I'm excited. excited. So we are ready to taste test these bad boy carbonaras. Let's see who is the winner. Let's get your yolk a mixin'. This is the presentation that we were speaking about. Pot my yolk. Let's Pot do it. Pot my yolk. Let's do it. <laughs> this is what he was talking about with Mario Batali. We get the yolk, mix it up, get this nice and creamy. Right. And cheddar. <laughs> if you'd like to mix it up more. <laughs> Lady in the tramp moment almost there. <laughs> almost. Mm. That is a creamy carbonara. Now, I love about this dish was the egg yolk. When I have breakfast and I have like just regular eggs, whether they're over medium, over easy, my favorite part is the yolk. So I love dipping my bread in the yolk. And this is just, this is just a really good dish that does add to the creaminess. And even if mine, which I think mine is creamier, I think just having that yolk on the dish and mixing it up yourself just does something to my senses. Like, I see it, I know I'm doing it, so I'm immediately gonna think, oh, super creamy. I think it's just gonna add to the taste. Yeah, for visual aesthetics, it's amazing. Like, yeah. you're automatically like, oh, I get to break my own yolk and have it all run over my pasta. You get to control the creaminess. So, that's what's really cool. And I love that, I mean, he just, he throws in such a big amount of black pepper, so yeah. I, I really love that. And the pancetta, oh, yeah. I good. love this dish. It's good. All right, let's get this one in here. Okay. Did you get pancetta? Oh, I'm, I'm going straight for the pancetta. Mmm, tastes like pancetta. Mmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, I'm really a, in, a fan of this. The cheese, the extra eggs, just add to that creaminess. And in that dish, I think I would have probably, if we would have mixed that more, it would have been fine. But I definitely got the taste of yolk, which I like. But this is just a cream. This is almost like a cream sauce that was just so easy to make. And it's, oh man. A really great dish. That yeah, is really good. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's very cheesy. Very cheesy. Yeah. And I'm, everyone knows I love cheese. Um, I'm gonna go with Anne Burrell's because of the, the overall taste. I love the aesthetic that Mario Batali did there, but I love the, the creamy texture with the pancetta. I got going for bite Same thing with here. the pepper. It just all comes together really, really well. Let's see what BC's got. BC's gonna try one more. And then, you know, I mean, since you're gonna do it, I might as well do it as well. Man, mm. this is a tough call. They're both very good. I mean, very, I mean, obviously, like we said earlier, you're dealing with Anne Burrell, the sous chef of Mario Batali. They worked together for years. She probably learned so much from him that, I mean, this is where this came from, but it's, uh, for me, this is, this is the better version, but let's see what BC has to say. You know what? I hate to say it, but you're right. For visual purposes and for the uh, ability to break your own yolk, I really like Vitaly's dish, but Burrell's just has a creamier, richer, more velvety texture almost. It, it really, I mean, it's it's really good. <laughs> it's, it is really good, I'm happy with it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, you can't lose with either one. But in this case, Ann Burrell's the winner today, Mario Batali close second. And that being said, my name is BC Hoffman. I'm Adrian Bustamante. And uh, for all you viewers at home, here at Recipe Wars, we are having a t-shirt design contest. Ooh. That's right, so viewers, if you can do any food-related t-shirt theme, 
and send it to us at recipewars at gmail.com. We will not only make a t-shirt out of that, based on whichever one I like the best, of course. Adrian might help with that. And uh, we'll see. <laughs> I will not only be wearing your logo, but I will also send you your own t-shirt with Ooh. your own logo. That's right. So please, again, that's send a recipe themed or culinary themed or any type of food related themed t-shirt to recipewars at gmail.com. Please subscribe to our channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and you keep watching and we'll keep cooking.